Good evening. Welcome to the Lord's house on this Thanksgiving Eve as we gather together to give God thanks for all the blessings that he gives to us, especially for the gift of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We'll be following the order of worship as found in our bulletin and on our screen. We begin with our opening hymn, number 892, Come Ye Thankful People, Come. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. He has created us together with all creatures. He has given us our reason in all our senses, and still takes care of them. He has given us our spouses and children, our land, animals, and all that we have. He richly and daily gives us all that we need to support our bodies and lives. He defends us against all danger and guards and protects us from all evil. All this he does is only our poverty, blind, and mercy, without any merit or For all this, it is our duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. 
God has indeed given us all we need to support our lives, and yet we often fail to return thanks for all he has given us. We often take for granted the abundant blessings he poured into our lives. We have often hungered for more, rather than being content with what the Lord has given. We now turn to the Lord, seeking his forgiveness for the sake of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we confess that we have taken your good gifts without returning thanks. Forgive us for our grumbling. Have mercy on us, forgive us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your good gifts and walk in your glorious ways. Almighty God in his mercy has given many good gifts to you, but the greatest of all was his beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus has died and is risen for you and your salvation. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We read responsibly portions of Psalm 104, beginning with the men and boys. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you send forth your spirit, they are created. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, in your abundant mercy, you have always given us every good and perfect gift. Stir up our hearts to remember your goodness and always return thanks to you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading for Thanksgiving is from Deuteronomy chapter 8. Moses said, The whole commandment that I command you today you shall be careful to do, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers. And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothing did not wear out, and your foot did not swell these 40 years. Know then in your heart that as man disciplines his son, the Lord your God disciplines you. So you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and by fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks and water, of fountains and springs, flowing out in the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper, and you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read responsibly Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. The epistle lesson is from Philippians chapter 4. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, Practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at length you have received your concern from me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned, in whatever situation I am, to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Yet it was kind of you to share my trouble. And you Philippians yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered into a partnership with me in giving and receiving, except you only. Even in Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs once and again. 
Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that increases to your credit. I have received full payment and more. I am well supplied, having received from Euaphroditus the gifts you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in the glory in Christ Jesus. To God our Father be the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Be stand for the Holy Gospel. Alleluia. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. Glory On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers, who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, and fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, We're not ten cleansed, where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You, you may be seated for our next hymn. Please open your hymnals to page 310 in the prayer section, page 310. At the very bottom of that page, 310, let's join in the thanksgiving prayer to God. Heavenly Father, God of all grace, 
Govern our hearts that we may never forget your blessings, but steadfastly thank and praise you for all your goodness in this life. Until with all your saints, we praise you eternally in your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Have you ever had someone remind you to do something? Don't forget to set your alarm. Or don't forget to pick up the kids. Don't forget to lock the door. Don't forget to say thank you. What starts out as a gentle reminder sometimes ends up sounding like a command. Don't forget. Have you ever wondered why we have to be told not to forget? Well, the answer is obvious. Without reminders, we probably would forget to do many of the things that need to be done. In many situations, the reason might be as simple as absent-mindedness. Or we might get distracted by other things or activities in our busy schedules. But when it comes to giving thanks, especially when it comes to thanking God, the reason for forgetting might be altogether different. We might forget to give thanks to God because we feel we really don't have much to thank God for. In our Old Testament lesson we heard a little while ago, the people of Israel, Israel were reminded that they didn't have a whole lot of possessions while they wandered for 40 years in the desert. Occasionally they went hungry. Sometimes they had the bare minimum to eat, the daily manna which God provided them. And then they grumbled. Manna, manna is all we get is this loathsome manna. You know, it's easy to forget when you don't have what you need or as much as you think you need. That's a challenge for many of us. When we combine what we have with what our culture, what our society says we should have or we deserve or are entitled to, it's pretty easy to forget about giving thanks to God. At times, especially in difficult financial times, we may be tempted to think that we don't have all that we need. We may have to go without. Sometimes we simply don't have all that we would like to have. Even when having three meals a day, nice clothes, a roof over our head, we may be tempted to think we're suffering when we don't have the newest model cell phone or the nicest vehicle money can buy or the second home. We think that we would be more thankful if only we had more stuff to give thanks for. But you know, having more stuff is really part of the problem in giving thanks. It's not the solution. When we have more things or possessions, we're just as likely to forget to give thanks to God, maybe more so. God made a promise to the ancient Israelites to bless them materially, physically, he said to them, the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land full of brooks, water, fountains, and springs, flowing out into valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron." out of which you can make things, out of whose hills you can dig copper. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? The promised land. God said that they would eat and be full and bless the Lord. But then God warns them against forgetting him. When they have everything their hearts desire, bellies full, nice houses and much wealth, God says, your heart will be lifted up and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Remember, they and their ancestors for 400 years were enslaved. In other words, in their haste to enjoy God's blessings, they will forget God's salvation in freeing them up from slavery, defeating Pharaoh and his mighty forces back at the Red Sea and bringing them to this land of milk and honey. Lest we think of ourselves more highly than they, we sometimes do the same thing. 
with an even greater offer of salvation. You see, in our hurry to acquire and enjoy more and more and more of the pleasures and the stuff and the things of the creature comforts, the latest and greatest technology, we can forget what's really important in the first place. God has blessed us in this country in so many ways compared with the poverty that exists in much of the rest of the world. Most of us are wealthy. But we sometimes forget even greater and more important is God's salvation for us through Jesus Christ. You see, God freed us from a slavery to sin, far worse than a slavery to another race. He did that, which was our natural condition with its consequences of eternal death. Jesus, we know, on the cross, defeated Satan for once and for all. And so the Lord is bringing us along through this life into the promised land of heaven and eternal life. But when we forget that, that greater plan of salvation that God has for us, that action, we, are, we run the risk of forgetting how much he provides for our physical needs. When the people of Israel enjoyed all of the physical uh, gifts that came as blessings from the Lord, God warned them, beware lest you say in your heart, my power and my strength of my hand have gotten me this wealth. Isn't that our problem at times? While we blame God for what we don't have, we take credit for what we have. We think that all we have acquired and achieved are a result of our hard work and effort. And so is it any wonder that we are often selfish or we fail to use our blessings, our resources that God has entrusted to us, to his glory. And that we need to be reminded, as we are tonight, to say thank you, God. We think it's ours because we earned it. So what's the solution to our forgetting to thank God more often? It's not having more stuff. It's not being nagged into remembering to give thanks. See, as much as we have been blessed materially, it's, it's really the wrong place to start in remembering to give thanks to God. We really ought to start where God has redeemed our lives from death and hell and where he has won for us an eternal victory. Instead of looking at all our physical blessings and possessions and remembering to give thanks, we ought to really remember our spiritual blessings. Forgiveness for all of our sins that we've committed the ones that we are aware of, the ones that we aren't aware of, the ones that we're going to commit in the future. Delivered from them in the waters of baptism at a very early age in our life. Sunday after Sunday through the absolution and through the reception of the Lord's Supper. We really ought to give thanks for the continual love and support of God in His Word and the fellowship of this congregation, His church. We really ought to give thanks that we have been given the gift of all gifts, the faith in Jesus Christ, the hope of eternal life, along with the promise of the resurrection of our bodies from the grave. And so when we stop to look at all the things that God has entrusted to us, remember that all we have is a pure gift from our loving Heavenly Father. None of it we brought into this world, and none of it we'll take with us when we leave this world. The truth is we deserve absolutely nothing from him but punishment. And yet God in his mercy has foregone that. He's punished his own son in our place and him, he's given us so much. So instead of thinking what we don't have, why not remember how much we do have? Not just the bare month, minimum, but so many gracious blessings given by God for our enjoyment. And as we remember our redemption in Christ Jesus and all of our blessings as pure gifts of God, we'll discover that the number of them or the value of our physical blessings really don't matter in the long run. You see, it's in Christ. We have all that we need for eternity. Perhaps a shortage at times or a lack of physical blessings may be for our benefit. God has said that he allowed the people of Israel to suffer during their 40 years of wilderness wanderings to to test them and to see what was in their heart by having them suffer or go without at times God wanted them to know that man does not live by bread alone but 
by every word that comes from the mouth of God. The same is true for us. Lack of certain blessings at times in our lives will help us remember that our life does not consist in our possessions. We don't live by bread alone. We live by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. That's what St. Paul meant when he said in our epistle reading, I have learned that in whatever situation I am to be content, I know what it's like to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. When we remember, as St. Paul said, we can do all things through the strength that God gives us, we'll be truly thankful and content in all circumstances and be ready to say, thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of God, which passes our human understanding, keep our hearts and minds always through faith in Christ until life everlasting. Amen. Please stand and join me as we confess our Christian faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the offering.
Let us return thanks to the Lord for all the good and perfect gifts he has given us and let us pray for all people according to their needs. Dear Heavenly Father, you've given us abundant earthly blessings. As we celebrate Thanksgiving, we thank you for the food and drink that will be on our tables this day and every day. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Lord, provide for all those who do not know from where their next meal is coming. Strengthen them with your presence and pray, raise up people who will have mercy upon them. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Lord, thank you for the gifts of our clothing and shoes, house and home, and for all our fiscal resources. Give hope to the poor, the homeless, the unemployed, and the underemployed. Help them to rely on you in these challenging times. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Lord, thank you for our families and friends. Thank you for our community of faith. Thank you for the opportunity to gather with the ones we love. Protect all who are traveling for the holiday and strengthen those who cannot be with family and friends. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Lord, thank you for the government and those who are in authority over us. Bless them with wisdom and compassion. Leave them where you want them to go. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Lord, thank you for taking care of your creation. Help us and all people who are stewards of this planet to make wise choices to care for all you have given us. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Lord God, thank you for the gift of health and long life. Look with favor upon all who are sick, injured, and recovering. Have mercy upon them and heal them according to your will. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Lord, thank you for the gift of good friends and faithful neighbors. Be with all those who are lonely, those who have moved to a new place, and those who are struggling to find community. Bring them the joys of fellowship with others who return thanks to you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.